I'm Andrew Josie, Vice President of Standards and Certification at the Open Group. I'm joined today by Paul Holman, Vice Chairman of the Open Group's Architecture Forum, and we're going to talk about business architecture and the latest developments in the TOGAF Standard version 9.2. Thanks, I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation. Well, Paul, um, how do you think business architecture should be addressing today's challenges with business transformation? So, I, I think that's a really uh, a key point, and um, one of the things I was reflecting on not that long ago was I used to say business architecture was about mirroring the business. In other words, understanding what the business did so that you could kind of reflect that in the enterprise architecture. Um, today, I think it is still that, but I think it's more than that as well. I think there's so much around uh, trying to understand disruption, trying to understand uh, how you make an, a business agile um, and how businesses themselves can innovate that uh, business architecture has actually become even more important than it was before. Um, and I think that's the kind of key challenge for, for business architects and, and business architecture. Okay, how, how, how do you see it supporting uh, this sort of movement to Agile in particular? Well, one of the key things in, in Agile is understanding uh, value. So Agile is all about value and value add. Uh, and if you really get down to the, the principles of, of Agile and, and things like Lean, um, value, is why you do something. And frankly, if it doesn't add value, you shouldn't do it. That's a, a key, key agile principle. But that begs the question, what is valuable to my organization? So you need to have a way of understanding what the value propositions are, what the value streams are in, in the business in order to be able to uh, deliver anything that's, uh, that's agile. Uh, the two are, are inextricably linked. Okay, and I understand there are some new TOGAF series guides that sort of help in that area in particular, especially around value, capabilities, business models, information mapping. Could you tell us a little bit about those? Uh, yeah, th those are the, the four main things that uh, exist as series guides now. Um, some great work has been done by uh, uh, many people looking at exactly those topics. Um, I, if I pick each one out, um, the, uh, I'll start with, with just my personal favourite, uh, I'm, I'm prejudiced slightly, I, I like capability models. Um, I, I've always found that whenever I use a capability model it's been a really good ally and friend. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, should I show favouritism? <laughs> um, but capability models, uh, one critical area that has been uh, captured, there's some good standards uh, and some good examples about use of those, how to develop them and how to share them with the business. Um, and capability models help identify what an organisation has to do, what abilities it has to have to be able to be deliver its value propositions. Um, and, and against the capability you can kind of understand what, uh, what businesses need to do and what therefore any projects you might work on, any change initiatives, any gaps you want to close uh, can address. Um, uh, allied to that, and we talked about value streams. Uh, value streams are ways of representing uh, how value is added by an organisation in a joined up way. Um, uh, similar to value chains, but broken out into that each step along the way individually adds value in its own right. Um, and a great way of being able to illustrate what an organisation is, is trying to achieve. Um, and uh, that can be mapped to capabilities. What capabilities do you need to deliver those values? Um, <clears throat> the, the other really key part is um, anyone who's ever worked in uh, architecture knows that information is, is critical. It's the lifeblood that runs throughout the business. Um, and information uh, modelling, whilst uh, information architecture is a domain in its own right, Within business architecture, there's a special kind of place for key level entities, things that are absolutely critical to those businesses. Um, things like plan or part or process uh, that mean something very, very specific to that business. Um, and uh, everybody who's ever worked in any industry will know what those words are for them. Um, and those uh, exist in their own right in the business architecture. And, and we have some series guides that look at the, the information modelling for those key entities. And then the last one, which in some ways kind of sits first, but I've, I've left it to kind of bring them all together, is the um, business modelling. 
and uh, some really sage advice around how to do business modeling, um, but bearing in mind that a lot of business modeling is about communication. So understanding who the audience is um, and what message you want to get over to your stakeholders. Uh, the number of times I've been asked, you know, can you put a single, my whole business on a single A4, um, where in fact actually there are so many different stakeholders, you kind of want to have uh, different models for different purposes, depending on what message you're trying to put over. But that series guide to address them comes up with some great hints, some great techniques for being able to address uh, business modelling. And those four really are the fundamental uh, updates, separate series guides, but also in the TOGAF uh, standard specification. So Paul, I understand uh, professionalism is very important to the Open Group and they've been making some changes in this area, bringing on some new programs in the area of business architecture. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, professionalism uh, has always been important for people who want to build their career out. And I think business architecture has been an area where, um, as a business architect, a lot of people have, have felt a little bit left out, to be quite honest, a little bit left out in terms of um, what is the career path for a business architect? How do you become a business architect? Um, and how do you demonstrate that you are a good business architect? And I, with the development now of a, a separate series of set of series guides and the ability to build a credential that actually um, allows for an open badge to be awarded for somebody who is a business architect, uh, business architects can now actually demonstrate and say, I, I have uh, a, a level of knowledge and a level of practice around uh, business architecture akin to other similar kind of professions and I, I can display that um, and for me that's been uh, shown to be valuable amongst people especially when they're starting their careers or they're coming through um, a lot of people these days are working as say business analysts in, in uh, agile teams um, and they'd like to see where that could go uh, and how and having therefore a credential they can aim for that helps build up their CV, helps build up their, their professional status that uh, is recognised by their peers um, is hugely valuable for them. So the, uh, the initial business architecture credential uh, is a great step towards adding to that, to that portfolio. Okay, well, thank you very much for talking with us today, Paul. And it's really good to hear about all these new things that are happening around the business architecture space in the open group. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.